Hello, what's going on YouTube? This is Jay Muddy here bringing you guys a, another top five video and it has been a, about four days since I made a video and uh, I've just been, you know, getting back to work finally. Uh, I ended up losing um, both of my jobs so that, you know, that kind of sucks but, you know, since it was the start of the new year and whatnot, I, you know, they, I was a temp and they just decided they didn't need me anymore, but, um, starting off the, uh, this next set in the structure deck re release, uh, it, it's official release is today, which is pretty cool, and to kick things off, um, I will be giving away a free firewall dragon, um, once I hit 300 subs, so, you know, want to know how to win a firewall dragon, go ahead and stick around to the end of the video but without further ado let's go and get started well now my top five video is bringing you you know the top five um, meta decks um, post uh, extreme forces and this is assuming you know we have the ban list you know so I am including a potential ban list as to what can maybe shift some things uh, back and forth so we're going to go and get started, and we're going to start off with our number five pick, which is Light Sworn Variant type decks. Now, with the introduction of Curios, the Light Sworn Dominion, or Dominion and Light Sworn, whatever you want to call it, in Extreme Forces, it is going to bolster the, the uh, consistency of Light Sworns pretty heavily. You can literally foolish any card. Um, and, um, yeah. It just gives you an instant mill four. Uh, it gets you any car back from the graveyard when it gets dealt with, which is really really solid. Um, it's very very easy to make. You can make it with a predator plane engine. You can make it with just playing light swarms by themselves. Hell, you can even make it with grinder golem. And uh, for those of you who don't know how to make it with uh, grinder, um, see, seeing as we don't have security dragon grinder golem is not really all that abusable still but in light swarms it definitely is how you how it works is you start with a link spider and a link karibo um making your aug shift to bounce the grinder you spout uh spawn two more tokens you sack one of the tokens for link karibo and there you have your um materials necessary you got your aug shift your one token and your Link Rebo, and you can make Curios. You can send Fairy Tail Snow to the graveyard and mill three more cards. Um, Grinder Golem in a Light Sworn deck isn't really all that bad because there's so many ways to special summon, especially when you start making things like Firewall Dragon. Um, if you choose to dump Dandelion with uh, Curios, then you can have some really stupid plays mill a Wolf, mill a Felis, or Felice, whatever you want to call it. And link into your firewall and then link again and start going off uh, with cards from your hand it's very very solid it's very strong light swords are just getting more consistent as the sets go on and on um, as we're getting more links and that is why I have light swords as my number five pick I wanted to pick ABC's but the fact that you know, people are anticipating FA's being somewhat viable, which means not only are, are, is Buster still in the side deck uh, for Cherry's targets, but that also means against like decks like FA, if somebody wanted to, let's say, side deck against both decks, they would start siding System Downs. And System Downs really does hurt ABC just as much as um, Cherry's does, except people don't really have System Downs in the side deck because. ABC is has been the only machine deck um, that's been viable, but the matchup isn't very likely. So that's why I couldn't put ABC for number five because of the collateral effect that FA has um, brought um, its way. So moving on to number four, it's gonna be a little bit of a shocker, but you know, of course, um, this is just me and my personal. Um, pick as the months go on number four after extreme forces we have world chalice of course um not of course but why do i pick world chalice well let's see because this fairy structure that brought us eva you know and this eva can not only search us 
uh, orange lights, but green lights. Some people plan to play two orange, one green, or three orange. I still plan to play three orange because negating hand traps is very, very crucial. And a deck like World Chalice, where half the deck is fairy, Herald of Orange Light is one of the only cards that can negate hand traps if you're going first. Not only that, but the deck has really adapted a lot. It actually made it to day two. It didn't no, I'd get the top cut in the what this past YCS. Um, I forget which YCS it was, but it was um, no, uh, last weekend. It was last weekend. Um, YCS did make it to day, or ah, World Chalice made it to day two as usual because they always make it to day two and they always lose out in the bubble every time. But the reason why I believe World Chalice will make it to number four is because, again, with more Link monsters. The, the deck's just going to get better and better. All the uh, problems of the deck are slowly getting the little holes that the deck has been having is slowly getting plugged. And not only that, but, you know, with things like uh, EBE, um, it's a level one target, which in the same set as uh, Extreme Forces, we get in a card like Downbeat, which is makes it live off of a shine ball and and also Lee but not only that but let's say you do have your Eva you know and you don't have access to Lee you can also downbeat your Venus into your Lee after your combo is done which is pretty awesome um, cards like unexpected dies Exodius and the Phantom Knights trap card to get also, and even cards like Gofu to get your play started and starting to run cards like Dandelion because this is one of the decks I can actually abuse Dandelion pretty good for pitching card, uh, pitching it to the graveyard and spawning more tokens and getting closer to your win condition um, it's pretty awesome as well not only that but cards like Archlord Christia you know Gamma Seal and Trigates, you know, they, they make the real unbreakable boards. Card Boards like Sleeper and tri Cold Link Trigates are pretty broken if you have Kaijus and if you have like things like Evenly Match, but when you have uh, a Floodgate like Christia just prohibiting you from specialing and having a Gamma Seal on my board where you can't Kaiju me, um, having two to three negates off of the waterfront by itself with a Trigate, those kind of boards cannot be broken unless you have a sphere mode so you may as well go to game two um but the real real reason why i believe that num world chess would be number four on this list is because of one card and that card is skull deed skull deed the one card that fixes a lot of our problems because it literally fixes your hand and it unbricks your hand if you're if you open venus and not a lot of other good cards Venus is literally a one card skull deed to where you can draw four and bottom deck three. Your hand is fixed. You can now play the game. Not only that, but World Chalice is the only deck that makes skull deed really um, unaffected by um, hand traps because of the fact that you, nine times out of ten you're using M Duck as one of the materials. And so skull deed's effect is really, it's likely going to get masked. You're likely going to mask the um, Skull Deed effect so it doesn't get hit by Ash Blossom uh, at all to where you can go ahead and get your draws. And that's the other reason why I like World Chalice so much and put it a little bit higher on this list is because the deck is really good at masking all of their important cards by the chain link. That's why, although hand traps are really good against the deck, it's really not that effective against the deck at the same time provided you're the player is doing a good job of masking all the good effects masking the legacies masking the ningirsus masking the skull deed um coming up and you know skull deed is a phenomenal addition to the deck and so is eva actually being able to search um the hand traps to stop other hand traps not only that but to search your cards to get your combos going if you don't have it already is just a big bump a big plus in my opinion so that is why i put world chalice at number four i would put it a number higher but there's still some holes that need to be filled and there's still a few 
um, things that we need to fix the fragileness. Like, you know, when we get World Legacy Inheritor and all that good stuff, then that's when um, our follow-up plays are really going to start coming in. But until then, it's going to be sitting at number four. So, coming in at number three, this will be another surprise to a lot of you people. Um, number three, we have Spirals. And in particular, I have going second Spirals because if either master plane gets banned or if resort gets limited it won't be as optimal to go first um because if you open certain things um you're not going to make the most optimal board you can possibly make not only that but searching resort um is a little bit even yeah getting resort early game during your first turn is even more important if you go first versus going second to where you can still play three spiral tufts uh, to break boards. Um, you still can have your three full spiral goods. You still have your super agents to deal with back row and you still have your assaults and all that other good stuff to net you more advantage as you're going second and using tough multiple times to deal with your opponent. Sleeper it would is not even being looked at right now. That is what's you know the big problem with spirals. Granted, you know, master plan net nets you all the advantage, but you know, what is all that advantage without their this super big boss monster that blows up two cards every round or four cards with every round, two cards per turn? You know, that um, spot sleeper might actually go to to doubles, maybe just to facilitate more um, board breaking power um, it, it still has to be left to be determined uh, but I see a lot more spiral decks going back to playing utility wire and playing um, more going second spiral and to that regard so spirals is still going to be a nice contender it's just not going to be super over the top with three resort and master plan just running around um but don't get me wrong the deck will still do something especially if you choose to go second because tough will still probably be at three uh big red will be at three um foolish barrel goods will probably still be at three assault and rescue will both still very much be at three so you can expect this deck to still be around for a little bit just not you know taking up all spots mostly of um top cuts so moving on to number two we have uh trish stars over here trish stars coming in hot every set trish stars is getting something new um trish stars is just a deck that withstands any format and any change because trish stars is such a small engine to where literally the rest of the cards are just adapting just adapt to format changes bandless changes the the deck can do it because you like half not even half the deck you need for the deck to function so trick stars have plenty of space and the more trick stars that come out you know the more the more cheese the more you know the more utility they have over time and so that's why i put trick stars as number two there's still there's not really much i can say about trick stars other than the fact that yeah it it's very good at achieving win conditions and it's very good at playing around things. And it's one of the best decks in terms of, you know, implementing a certain side deck because of how many cards are not only interchangeable in the deck, but expendable in the side as well. And so Trick Stars is just all around just really, really good in that instance so now of course we're going to number one and of course that would be pendulum magicians now pendulum magicians is like it's still the most consistent deck in the game but and it's not the most fragile but it does have the most counters in terms of the side deck which again i do i am concerned that even with electromite that pendulums still won't be the best deck simply because of the fact that Electromite just is just like a really huge utility card. But if the pendulum mechanic itself is still being countered, then Electromite doesn't really do too much for the deck. 
you know, yes, if if there is no answers and there is no responses to things such as, you know, game two and game three, then yeah, Electromite is it's a broken car. Don't get me wrong, but you know, it's it's a it's a it's a good catalyst to facilitate through all your pendulum cards that you already get access to with most of the cards in the main deck as a whole and Electromite just gives you extra cards that's really it but you know getting extra cards is it enough to win a game in fact you know you need to be able to have answers to your opponent's counters which is what pendulums have always struggled with there's just so many crippling counters to the pendulum mechanic as a whole it's not so much Electromite it's just the fact the pendulum mechanic is still vulnerable even though Electromite might not be and that is the problem I have with it. But, you know, the builds will change. Um, Chronograph Sorcerer is start g- gonna start getting played because it takes Time Gazer Magicians and just straight up summons them to the field, giving you extra fodder um, to make Electromite potentially without going into your, um, uh, committing your normal summon, which is huge. You're gonna see cards like this, um, this curtain riser, the abyss actor, because it can special itself from the pendulum zone. You got things like any and everything that can summon itself. Um, even dark worm, even dark, um, supreme king dark worm, can start being played in some builds, certain builds, because um, pendulum cards don't really go to the graveyard, and you can send it off of dragon shrine or foolish burial or something like that. It's just a free monster to special that does not commit to your normal summon. And basically, the goal of the new Pendulum deck is to put two Pendulum monsters on board without committing your normal summon, so you can go to your Electromite, um, save your normal for your Jokers, and, you know, just go for it. But, um, you know, I still think this deck will be a little bit number one, because tr- the only reason Trick Stars was number two in this format is to be simply because... Uh, Trick Stars is a really good spiral matchup, and Pendulums have a bad spiral matchup. Now, with spirals getting knocked down a little bit and knocked down a notch, uh, Pendulums might have an easier time against Trick Stars, but that Light Stage trying to lock down that time graph is pretty pretty bad. Light Stage is still really powerful, but the fact that, you know, we still have Dual Slides at 3, Skull Combat Joker at 3, Wavering Eyes at 3, is still really really nutty and you have cards like pendulum sorcerer being able to actually search joker out if you don't commit to your normal summon astral grab sorcerer is still a card that's very much a three giving you extra cards and all that good stuff but the new builds playing chronograph sorcerers and all that good stuff can easily um narito the more leader is going to start being played simply because it's actually very easy to get double chronographs and negating spell and traps is huge it will be huge especially if it comes to the mirror match and stopping potential duelist alliances or potential wavering eyes and all that good stuff and if pendulums are highly represented i can actually see some builds playing the draco engine again with face off multiple vectors and lectors uh, for the fact that if vectors and lectors are in the um uh, scales your opponent uh, pendulum effects start getting negated maybe if you use like things like iris and purple poison and you chain like face off and you get a vector to stop the scales from actually you know resolving their effects things like that i can see that happening there's there's a lot of uh different builds of pendulums and a lot of good um options for the pendulum deck as a whole but you know the problem number one still remains that um, there's still so many crippling hard counters to the deck that the deck you know there's just too many hurdles that it does need to overcome in terms of the side deck which really um, hinder the deck from being like stupid overpowered Um, and like I said Electromind is a it's a very good welcoming addition but it doesn't help counter you know, those crippling counters to the pendulum mechanic as a whole. And although I personally would not put 
uh, this at number one, I'll put it at number two because Trick Stars is just really freaking good and the side deck for Trick Stars doesn't uh, take away their consistency at all and all that good stuff. The fact that Pendulums need to run almost all of their cards uh, to search the whole deck out means the, um, that maximum you have space for four hand traps and that might bump your deck count up to 41, 42, I don't know. But, you know, running a certain amount of hand traps that a pendulum deck does take away consistency. So, I personally will put it in number two. But, you know, this is just a prediction. You know, I could be wrong. And a lot of people could be very, very smart if there's a bigger pendulum representation versus a trickstar representation. Um, similarly for the fact that trickstars might actually get some sort of hit on the ban list and pendulums may not also warrants pendulums getting put at the number one spot so that is my list guys um thank you very much for watching and now that for those who stuck to the end of the video if you do want to win a free firewall dragon just be sure to just subscribe to the channel our channel and comment down below um just comment down below hmm Firewall Dragon to 2. Just comment Firewall Dragon to 2. I love it at 3. No, no, no. You know what? Comment Firewall Dragon to... Th yeah. Firewall Dragon to 2. Uh, as much as I love 3 Firewall, I don't think it should get hit down to 1 right now. Same thing with Level Eater. Again, TCG is not really known for preemptively hitting cards until they become a problem. The only exception to that was Tyrant's Neptune, and that is because... Tyrus Neptune literally had no counters to it. There's literally no counter to a Tyrant Neptune except a Kaiju. And if you didn't have a Kaiju, you literally lost the game. But however, there is multiple ways to counter uh, Level Eater. There are multiple ways to counter Firewall Dragon. So, I do hate to uh, spoil people's hopes and dreams and hope and uh, hopes for a preemptive strike against certain things. But that is not how TCG Konami does things. OCG Konami will preempt hit things just to you know make a potential problem not be a problem but we will not hit a card unless it's a problem because these level leaders you know level leader link rebo shenanigans might not actually be that much of a problem you know you could actually see blue eyes doing something again and all that good stuff and is that necessarily a bad thing probably not you know putting other decks that aren't spiral trickstar and pendulums in the in into the mix might actually give us some you know meta diversity you know things like cosmos maybe light swarms with or orbital hydrolanders and judgment dragons and all that good stuff and maybe blue eyes maybe those decks can come back to you know again bringing some meta diversity maybe even infernoids you know so is that such a bad thing i again i don't think level leader will make any already meta relevant deck even more overpowered so you know me uh, level leader is really more for rogue strategies and so let rogue strategies have their fun let them have their cards it's fine again same thing with firewall it's not um tier one decks don't use more than one so you know but at the same time three can get out of hand really quickly um as the link decks go on but then again, as the new links are coming out, like Troy Mares and Skull Deep, you'll find that there will decks will have less and less space to play three firewalls. So I don't know. But anyway, comment. Just be subscribed to the channel and comment firewall to two, and your username will go in a pot. And once I hit 300 subs. I will go ahead and announce the winner and send the Firewall Dragon over. So, that is it guys. Thank you very much for watching. This is J Money and I'm signing out.